Yeah. He never. No, I should. I will let you speak. Hundred percent. He kept to us uh, speaking, mm. asking mm. questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, when we want to ask questions, should we move a bit? So should we move a bit from the road? Because I think it's in the middle in the of the road, isn't it? Can be here. There's a bit of shade. When we ask questions, mm. or when we are willing to ask questions, we should also be willing to be asked questions. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. We cannot only ask and then run away. Yeah. So that's cowardness. I agree. The difference between a monologue and a dialogue, basically. A dialogue yeah. is when two parties participate. Uh, okay. So my question was about Jesus, okay. to remind you. Yeah. Jesus. How do you see him? God. Okay. Literally. As simple as, as that. Yes. Uh, one, three in one, just God. Well, when, when it comes to the, the Trinity, the word Trinity, literally, it's not found in the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we can find the Lord Jesus Christ uh, referring, addressing to the Jewish people or else to his disciples this way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I'm not, I have no the physical Bible with me. I came all the way from last year. That's right. So, can use the digital one, isn't it? Yeah. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 16. Mm -hmm. You have seen me? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father? Uh, yes, that's a little bit before. Okay. When he addresses his, yeah. his disciple, Philip. So. Mm. Verse 16, it says, And I, which, which is one, will pray the Father, second, and he shall give you another comforter, which is the third, which, we, which is known in Christianity as the Holy Spirit, or Holy Ghost, or in Hebrew, Ruach, Ruach, Ruach HaKodesh. Okay, so these are the three attributes of the one God. Now, but in order to let you understand why our faith, uh, our belief is based, why we believe Jesus is, uh, is God, I am obligated to go into the old scripture in the Tanakh, in the Old uh, Testament. Can I make a point about that before you go? Okay, sure. So when, when Jesus says he's addressing the Father, yes. That means he's not the father, he's different from the father, right? Well, the first, uh, if you allow me just, yeah. as we said, you know, <laughs> each one person speak, right? So if he was talking to the father, maybe you correct me after I'm finished, right? If you disagree with me. If he was talking to the father, that means he's talking to someone else other than himself, right? And that someone other than himself is going to send an entity, which you refer to as the spirit, yeah? The Holy Spirit, whatever you want to refer to it. We have different interpretations when it comes to it, but, and he will send you another comforter, right? He will send you the Paracletus. That's why he's going to... The, the Paraclete. That's, that's, the, that's what the real word used, right? Not the comforter. So, he will send you the Paracletus. So, the Father is going to send the Paracletus. And Jesus is asking the Father. He's going to pray to the Father. He's going to ask the Father, which is not him. Because he's asking someone other than himself. To send the third entity. So, from this verse that you brought to me, it proves to me that there is a man who has less authority than the Father. Therefore, he needs to ask the Father. And the Father is going to send the third entity, which is called the Holy Spirit. Now, this shows me that this is actually Islamic belief. There is a man who prays to God to ask him for something, which we refer to as a prophet. And there is a Holy Spirit who is an entity that the Lord is sending to do commands of the Lord. I have no issue with that. So I think my question was about the Trinity. So, so okay, no. I don't understand how you get the well, Trinity from that verse. Uh, if you don't believe God can manifest himself in different ways in the same time, there is nothing I can do for this. This is our belief. We are called to believe the Trinity, sure. just to explain. Can I ask you a name? Leave you. Leave you. However, yeah. Well, uh, in, the, in the book of Philip, Philip is because I will always go through the scriptures, I will never give my own idea. That's good. In the book of Philippians chapter 2, in verse five, verses 5 and 6, mm. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, 
being the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He chose to show us and to, uh, to uh, teach us humbleness. He never needed to pray as he did in the Garden of Gethsemane. He never needed to wash uh, his apostle feet as he did. But he, he did those things to leave us an example of humbleness to follow. Okay, so you said to me about uh, if you don't believe that God can manifest in three different ways. Yes, that's, uh, what I'm that saying, is nothing I can do. Sure, what I'm saying about that is well, first we have to establish that in the Bible God says that he manifests in three ways. Yes. Before we say whether we believe it or not, we have to first find it in the Bible because now you have assumed it's there and then you told me you don't believe it, but it's not there. We're looking for it first, right? After we find it, then we see whether I believe in its existence well, or not. I just show you, but you don't accept it. No, I'm it's saying, I'm saying, did I give you what I understand by the verse? Yeah. I said the verse in no way, shape or form says, the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son are one. It says someone is going to ask someone else to send someone else. How did well, you get oneness from there? That's, that's the issue that, uh, that I... Well, Okay, so that, that was the first point. Your sure. second point was about? Uh, let me just uh, stop on, on this first. Okay, go ahead. We so we humans. need to make one point because I, then I will have to deal with many we points. Have, yeah. We have the physical flesh, we have our mind, mm -hmm. and with our mind we are able to go back in a, in a past mm -hmm. to, to think about things that has happened to us mm -hmm. or not. And we also remember, can basically. Think, remember. Mm -hmm. And we also can think about what will come tomorrow. What might come tomorrow, yeah. What might come tomorrow, mm -hmm. aren't we? Yeah. That's our ability. Yeah. And that, that's our mind. Mm -hmm. Also, we have our breath. Third element. Breath. So, yes. Mm -hmm. So, why do you believe God cannot be this way? Because... Ruach means the breath of God, the very spirit of God. That means you can go to the Hebrew guy mm -hmm. and ask him what means Ruach. And if it's... Uh, the, the I know, I know, I know what it means because I speak Arabic. Oh, and and it's and, almost and it's almost the same. It's ruach and ruach. Yes. So I know the the word. I'm, I I am familiar with the Hebrew word, but the issue is different than all of this. You you're trying to say that this ruach is one with the father and the son. Now what you have done now is you giving me a human example. But if we backtrack, you told me I will use the Bible. I will not use my own words, right? So that that example you giving me is not in the Bible. Yes, it's not. What what I'm trying to ask you is this: Where does it in the Bible? In Jesus' words or otherwise, in the Bible, does it say that the Father, oh yeah, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one? You want me to open it for you? Huh? To open it? Yeah. In the book of John, chapter 10, verse 30. Yeah. Okay. Which, which, sorry? Reference? Book of John, mm. chapter 10, verse 30. He simply says, I and the Father I are one. And the Father are one. Can you, without reading, tell me the context of this verse? Well, Without reading. I have to read it. <laughs> okay, so I, I can tell you the context. My but I, will, I want you to read it from 26. 26 okay. is the context. Jesus was walking in but Solomon's porch. But believe not because you are not of my sheep. Yeah, okay. Be go, go before, go before, go before. From 25. Jesus was walking in Solomon's porch. No, before, 24. 24. Then came the Jews around him. Yeah, this is the beginning of the conversation. Okay. unto him, how long does that make us stop? They are funny. If thou be Christ, tell us mm -hmm. plainly. So they're asking about him being the Christ. The Christ. Mm -hmm. Because I will, we're going to go to that. To that. Mm. Why they were asking, are you the one that is promised? Okay. Jesus answered that. But we don't want to move from the topic, which is okay. Jesus being okay. right. So well, read in the context, yeah. Read in the context, yeah. I told you, mm -hmm. and you believe not. Mm -hmm. The words that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Mm. But ye believe not, because you are not of my sheep. Mm. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice. No one can pluck them out of my hand. No one can pluck them out of my Father's hand. I am the Father of My sheep hear my voice, mm. and I know them, and they follow me. Mm -hmm. People that believe, obviously. Sure. Okay? Uh, it's funny because the Jewish people, they're very, they're very stubborn, a lot stubborn than the Muslims. Sure, sure. And I give unto them, at, and I give unto them eternal life. He never says, my father. Why? Who is because, the one who can give? Because he's a representative life? of God. And a representative why? of God is okay. the one who gives why, on God's why, behalf. Why the Prophet of Islam didn't promise such a thing? He did. Too many companions. 
You know, we have 10 people who are, who are called Asher and Bashir in Jannah. The 10 people okay. who are giving glad tidings of paradise. But these are not the only people. Okay. There is more. So if you're asking you about that... Eternal okay. life and they shall never perish. Neither mm. shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Not my hand, uh, father's mm. hand. Which means... You will see the father's hand next. Okay. My, my father which gave them... Yeah, no one will pluck them out of my father's hand as well. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's you hand. You see? Okay. But so it's not the same hand. Follow. Since you told me to go from that, you sure. have to follow. Yeah, yeah I'm, I want we to finish it. I want to finish it. Yeah, yeah. We're not and done yet. I and my father are one. Simple, Next verse. Simple as this. Next verse. And then Jews took up stones. Let's see what he says to them. Against to crucify. Again to, to stone him. Why? Because mm. he used the very thing that Moses told them in in the book of Exodus, chapter three, verse forty. Tell them that. I am who I am, send you to... That's your, in your interpretation. We can continue reading and look what if Jesus said. If we go said. to the Jewish people to ask them for what reason they should stone someone, they will tell you this. I'll let you finish. Then I will deal with the point. We don't want to digress everywhere, yeah? Well, no, I, I'm not... I just want to read the context, not explain the context, okay. yeah? Okay. Then the Jews took up stones again, mm. again to stone him. Not it's just one time. Okay. Jesus answered them, Many good works mm. have I should... Uh, you from my father. Okay. Which, for which of the, those words are you stoning me? Stone me. So I just want if you if you read, if you finish reading without kind of taking too okay. too much time over it, the so Jews, I can make my point basically. The Jews answered him saying, "For a good thing, for a good work, we stone thee not, but yeah. for blasphemy. Yeah. Why? Because sure. he says, I am. Sure. Okay. Sure. He didn't and say I am by the way in John 30. Okay. He said I am the father of one, but. I'll let you finish. However, That's why I said without giving, without, if, if you make so many points reading, I will have to talk as well on yes, so many points, right? Sure, Being Go ahead. the man makes thyself God. Once again, we have the confirmation mm. that in what he says in John chapter 10 verse 8, they understood that being a man you make, you made yourself God. I finished. Go ahead. Okay. Now, now I will read the context next time because this will take hours if we, if we keep doing it this way. So let me read the context for you, which is quite clear context, I would say. Okay, John 10, I will start again from 24. Okay, let's see what Jesus says, yeah? Okay, so they gathered, they gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly, right? Jesus answered to them, I told you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name bear witness to me, but you do not believe them because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. My Father, who has given them to me, so Jesus did not get, him, get them himself. I don't know how you missed this verse reading, but God no, gave I, I actually read it. Yeah. Uh, no, you haven't said this one. You can check on the camera, you'll see that you have read it. And then he said, Father is greater than all. That includes himself because he's not the Father. Okay. And no one is able to snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. The Jews took up stones to stone him. Jesus answered to them, I have shown you many works from my Father. So the works Jesus was doing is not his works, it's the works of God. The works from the Father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered, it is not for good work do we stone you, but for blasphemy. Because you're a man, you're just a man. Make yourself God. What did Jesus say? Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God. You know what Jesus is talking about? Uh, would you like to repeat the last sentence? Jesus yes, answered the, the them, psalm, is it not written? Yeah, I know. Yeah. In that psalm, I believe in Psalm 68. 86, you mean? Or 86. Mm. I know that it's a, in, a, in Psalms. Yeah, yeah. Th sure. But however, that psalm... What says, happens however, there? However, even though you are called son, you will die anyway. No, 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 no. He's saying here, you are called God. Yeah? Yes. Why is he saying this? Can I tell you why? He, says, he says in the next I verse. He says in the next verse. If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Do you say of him whom the father considered to be sent into the world, you are blaspheming? You, he's saying literally, the Jews are called gods, not just the son of God. 
and now you're telling me I'm blaspheming just because I said I'm the son of God? Why is he saying this? Uh, Do you, can I tell you why he's saying this? He's saying clearly, I'm just a person who's called the son of God. Oh, you're, the people in the, in, the, in the Old Testament are referred to as gods themselves. Good. Not just the son of God or someone said by God. So what I said is less than what you are called in your own scripture. So why you're blaspheming me for this? It's quite Good. clear. Now give the scripture from the Old Testament. Yeah, but I want to do one, th one thing okay. beforehand. Now, you're saying to me, I want you to read, uh, well, I will read it as, bit, as better I said, I will read it. John chapter 17, verse 21. You are claiming that I and the Father are one proves that Jesus is divine. Yes. Right? Okay. So if I show you Jesus saying there is other people who are one with the Father, they're also divine. Let us analyze this, this verse. Sure. Let's analyze the verse. Why not? John chapter 17, verse 21. If you want to go to the reference yourself. No, no, no. I just read. Sure. I'm preparing something else. Okay. So will you deal with this point before? Yeah, of course. Okay. Verse 20 he says, Neither pray are for these alone, but for them also that she believe they believe in me through their word. Okay. That they all may be one. Just as you, Father, are in me, and I'm in you. Now here is the key point. He says, just as he and the Father are one, the same way. All the believers will be one. And that proves what? That proves that this is not one in divinity. Otherwise, you believe you are a part of the Trinity. And every Christian walking in the, in the park is a part of the Trinity as well. Can I ask? That? Sure. No. So did you, did you get the question? Yes. Sure. Why is the question? He basically says that, that those that will come and believe, will, they will become one. Just as one. The same way he is one with the Father. Oh. Same way. So, Go ahead. in a... In the Bible, I don't remember right now whether it is. This, mm. It is written in the old, in the New Testament mm. that those that will achieve the salvation will become the body of Christ as a multitude. But it uh, doesn't make us in any way God. Okay, but my point was not about Jesus. It was about people being one with the Father. He said, he said they will be one with the Father the same way he is one with the Father. Which one is that verse? Let me just 17. I told you to go to it, that's why. Yeah. John chapter 17 verse 20. 17 verse 20? Yes. Neither okay. I pray for peace alone, but for them, for them also which shall believe on me through their words. Okay? 21. And they all may be one as thou, hmm. though Father, are one. Art, this is a very, very old English, it's King James. It's fine. Art in me, and I in thee, that Just they as also may be one mm -hmm. in us. There you go. So one in us here includes the Father and the Son. Doesn't okay. enclose Jesus as well. Lord might believe that thou hast sent me. So it doesn't mean I can see that they, it, this has made that so, to God. I would agree with you, 100%. That is why when Jesus said, I and the Father are one there, it does not make him worthy to be God as well. Okay. Now, so can you show me another verse where it shows that he, he can be God? Can I go a little bit to the Tanakh, to the Old uh, Testament? Sure, you can. Wherever you want to go, I don't I mind. You, I will read you some verses. Mm. I would love but let's to start, have a Jew here. But let's start with, with a verse for a verse, yes. yeah? So we, yeah. We obviously, we have, can have some time, we can talk. We go to the uh, book of Zechariah chapter 12, verse 10. Zechariah 12, 10. Yeah, we can even read before. And it shall come to pass from nine mm. that in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nation that come against Jerusalem. In the last days they will go. Sorry, can you, Zechariah? Chapter 12, verse 10. 9 and 10. Okay. Zechariah 9 and 10, yeah? Okay, now, uh, chapter 12, 9 and 10. Sure. Then he follows, this is the prophet that it's believed to, to live, uh, to have lived 500 years before the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, however, he is telling the, the Jewish people, and I will put upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication. Sorry, can, can, you, can you repeat that? And I will put upon the house of David. It says something completely... Oh, 10 you're saying, verse 10, not 9, yeah? yeah? yeah. 10, okay. Because yeah. you said 9 and 10, so I was looking at nine. 9, okay. 
and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Do you know who's speaking there? Is the prophet Zechariah. Okay, good. Before the Lord was born. Sure, sure. Okay. The spirit of grace and supplication. Mm. And they, whom they, the mm. Jewish people, mm. shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Mm. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. Now, would you like to explain me what this means? Uh, that is your Bible, isn't it? Yes. So we, we, our discussion is about Jesus yes. and Jesus being divine or not. Yes. I don't see this verse having any correlation with that. Really? If, you, if you personally do, you can tell me why. No. Okay. Tell me why, yeah. Let us, let us go word by word. And I will put I who? God. But Zechariah is speaking. Yeah, is you see why the representative of God can speak on behalf of God? Continue. My okay. point that I made earlier. God is talking through his prophecy. Thank you, just like he was doing with, with Jesus. Okay. And I will put, mm -hmm. this is a prophecy about sure, the future. Sure, sure. Upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Why Why he chose to mention people from one city uh, he says name why. Them in two different ways? He says why. I'll, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. I'm telling you, I read the verse, he says okay. why. No, the why. verse is why. Continue reading on, you will okay. see. Okay. And upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace and supplication, mm -hmm. and they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Okay? Okay. Who is the one that have been pierced? Not God, obviously, yeah? Well. Have God been pierced? They will mourn for him. If we go to a Jewish... So God was if pierced. We go, if we go to Jerusalem today. Okay. We go to every believer, Jew, Jewish believer. Ask them that you, whether they love God. They will rise up their right hand. Yes, we do. This is what they did to God when he finally came. My they question... Him. Now you're missing, you're, missing, you're missing a very important point. Where does it say this is Jesus? Now I'm asking you I a question. Need, sure. I don't need to see step, the name. Step by step, yeah. Even if I accepted what you say, which I don't, okay. right? Even if I accepted this, this means that God will be pierced, yeah? Okay. First, we need to understand why, why is God mean by being pierced, right? Okay. Is it a literal or a metaphorical way? Number one. Why? Number two. Number two. You have to prove to me that this is talking about Jesus. You cannot pierce air. Step, you you cannot allow, you allow, I allow you to finish, but you don't allow me to finish, right? Go, go, go. <laughs> you allow me to finish, right? So I say, well, I say this is very clear. Now, you're showing me a prophecy. I can say you, it's talking about you. Unless you give me evidence, this prophecy is talking about the man. Oh, since you speak about evidence, you, you, allow me to finish. Not, you said to me in the beginning you, of the conversation. Evidence. Tell me who is can, the evidence of your prophet sure. who was with him in the cave of Hiram. I with Can I answer? Go ahead. Okay. Now, before we, di we digress from our topic, that we were starting the discussion okay. on. I thought you were, look, you're a very, you're a very nice gentleman, yeah? I At least to. you try to listen, you try to talk. So let's stick on the topic. Let's not go, when I start saying I something. I don't forget that question. Sure, I, I don't want this you to forget it. question I attack. I don't want you to forget it. I'll tell you why. Because I, I will come to it myself, just after answering this. So clearly when you, when, when there was no clear verse about Jesus being divine, you went to the Old Testament of a verse that speaks about a prophecy of we don't know who. I can answer your question now? Go okay. Ahead. The evidence says for Prophet Muhammad receiving revelation from God is in the Bible. Do you want to see? I can show How you. How can you take something good from a book you declare to be corrupted? This means your prophet is corrupted. Step by step, do you want me to answer? Is the, is the Bible corrupted or not? Yes or not? Uh, yes, it is. How you can take something good from something you just declared is corrupt? Can I answer? But, but first you have to relax. Do you agree with I'm me? Relaxed. I, I don't, I don't see you relaxed. But it's getting come. funny. You're trying to take something Will you allow me to finish? Will you allow me to finish? Yeah. So we can have a conversation? Okay. Now, did, that, did Muslims tell you they don't believe in the whole entire Bible? Did I ever state in our conversation, if this is a book I wrote, right? Someone changed something in it. That doesn't mean the whole book is not from me. That means that what is changed is not from me. And that is now the mistake you're making yourself. Every Muslim says that the Old Testament and New Testament are changed. But that doesn't mean we don't say that there is nothing in correlation to God in there. You we can say, can you allow me to finish? Can you allow me to finish? Okay. The Quran says clearly, uh, we have sent you to the book, O Muhammad, the Quran. Confirming that which came before it and as a criterion over it. Chapter 5 of the Quran, verse 47. Thank you. Thank you. You heard this before. Okay. It's good. You heard it before. So the Quran judges what is right and wrong within the Bible. Now, that is not the issue now. 
You have brought to me a, pro a prophecy in the Old Testament. I'm telling you there is another prophecy in the Old Testament of our Prophet Muhammad. But I you're not. But you're being, no. But you're being. But you. Uh, song of Songs, something like no, this. No, no. Isaiah 42. Yeah. But you're, you're being inconsistent by accepting one prophecy and rejecting the other. Why do you accept one prophecy in Zechariah, which you claim is about Jesus, even though there is no mention of Jesus? I can show you a prophecy in Isaiah 42. Do you want to read it? Well, I know Isaiah 42. Yeah, please tell me who is it talking about. Let's well, take the verse by verse and you tell me well, who is it talking about. I always heard Muslims quoting Deuteronomy chapter 18, believing. Let's not deal with other Muslims. Okay. Let's deal with, with uh, the Chapter uh, 42. Song of, of Songs. Song of um, Solomon, yeah. Isaiah chapter 42. The book of John chapter 14 that it speaks about. There is much more, by the way. But okay, these are the very common ones. Sure. Okay. Now, I just come back and I ask you this question. Mm. How can you take something good from a book you declare to be corrupted? You said, so you, your How name is you Levi? You said your name from is? from a black sea. Your name is? Leave you. Leave you? Yes. Okay. I believe I asked her that question, leave you. Now we're going back in circles, well, right? I, I, you, before I, before I, we... I what you told me. Yeah, go ahead. The fact that we declare that the Bible has been corrupted, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the Bible has been corrupted. You cannot do this with the Bible. Take what you like and leave what you I'm not taking what I like. Do you know what I'm doing? I'm asking you if you believe in it or not. And you're stating that you believe in it. Therefore, I'm saying that Bible that you believe in, who is Isaiah 42 talking about? It's a simple well, question. So let's deal with it rather than digressing. digressing. About... So tell me who it's about. Let's read it. It's about... Because I'm very interested in reading it. Let's read it. And see who it applies to. Because right. we are claiming that it's about Prophet Muhammad. But you can tell me. No, it's not him. So you tell me who, who is it about. Or is it an unfulfilled prophecy of God? God made a prophecy and he didn't fulfill. I will start from verse 1. Please do, yeah. I don't mind. Behold my servant. Sure. For my uphold. Mm -hmm. Mine elect. Mm -hmm. In whom my soul delight. Yeah. I have put my spirit upon him. Yes. He shall... You see... Even here, God can we can we do that commentary? Because it's gonna take uh, ten years. But uh, let, let me just. Okay, can I tell you something? You can do commentary on the verses that you wanna do commentary on, but on, under one condition. Each verse you make commentary, and I make commentary. Yes, do you agree? Yes, very fair. Go ahead. So yeah. Even here, God speaks that He has a, per, uh, a spirit. Because obviously He's. I ex. believe that. I have put my spirit. But I'll tell me. you which spirit I believe in. Okay. And why I mean by spirit. He shall. God is God holy. Are you asking me a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course. Even his spirit is holy. Okay, let's, let's finish. I'll tell you what I think. Okay. But I'll let you finish. Okay, I, I, I will discuss. Yeah, yeah. When you finish I, one and, and okay. tell me, I will speak. I put my spirit upon him. Okay. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. Thank you. I love, I love what you just said. Now, can I make my commentary on it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one whom I will put my spirit. We believe as Muslims. Are you, does God own you? Well, I am a creation of God. So are you owned by God, yes or no? Or he, he's, you're not under his, his kingship? Of course. Okay. Every single sure. thing that is so, created is so under if, his kingship. So if I say this is the human of God, i.e. he belongs to God, being created by God, God owns him, there is no issue with me saying that. Similarly, we say that spirit of God, meaning the spirit that God created, his spirit, the ones that he owns, that spirit we refer to as the angel Gabriel that you asked who came to him in the cave. I'm telling you that spirit that came to him in the cave was, was Prophet Gabriel. Well, well, now, can no, I finish no, my commentary? Can I finish my commentary? Then you can say whatever you want to say. You made your commentary, right? Then, okay, he will bring forth justice to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Well, Gentiles are obviously every single nation apart from the Jews. Okay. Who did Jesus say he was sent to? The Jews, first of all. Okay. No, he said, who did he say I'm only sent to? To the Jews, but not only. If I show you, he said only. Will you accept that? Well, it might be, but he stopped. No, he said only. In and I can give you a reference. In uh, John chapter 4, sure. as he was traveling, mm. when he stopped near, near to the water, he spoke with the Samaritan woman. He had no issues with uh, Speaking to someone is different be than oh, being, he, he than being if, you allow me, gospel, if you allow yes. me to say, speaking to someone is different than being sent to someone, right? So me on my way speaking to someone, but it's not necessarily me sent to him. I'm saying what he said he's sent to. Now that person that is going to come okay. is going to be sent to the Gentiles, which none of the, uh, the Old Testament Jews were, were sent to. So that's the first point. We have someone sent to the Gentiles. So I believe, and all Muslims believe, that Prophet Muhammad was sent to everyone, not just to a specific nation. 
And that fits this verse perfectly. If you want to read okay. on, you can. He shall not cry. Sure. Nor live up. Nor cause his voice to be heard. Yeah, sure. In the streets. Oh, he, sure. he, he fought so many battles. He killed a lot of people. How can this? So, how can you believe that? What do you understand by that? Well, the verse says he shall not cry, nor sure. lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard. Did Jesus do that? Well, Jesus sometimes this, become a little bit. That's what. That's Jewish why. Jesus. That's why this is a metaphorical thing. Is not a literal thing. Okay, so let's go okay. on to the next verse. So, yeah. Okay. A bruised reed shall he not. This is break. also metaphorical. I'm sure you will agree. And the smoking flax shall he not quench. Sure. He shall bring forth judgment unto truth. Yeah. Okay. okay. He shall not fail nor be discouraged. Okay. Till he have set judgment in the earth. A and justice the, in there. Yeah. Okay. Ju judgment. Judgment. In your translation, in mine is this justice. Is, yeah. This, yeah. That's this fine. Is the translation I always. That's use. fine. That's all right. You are, you are entitled to do that. I don't mind. In the earth and. In the aisles shall wait for his law. Ah, now this is the important point. Oh. Jesus did not bring in a new law. He followed the commandments of Moses. He did not bring a complete new law, new Ten Commandments, new law. He obeyed and followed what Jesus brought. Now, Prophet Muhammad, on the other hand, have brought a complete new law. Have brought a new law to the nations. This is because this is saying the coastlands. So not just Jewish people, people around other than the Jewish people, will be waiting for his law. Now, this perfectly fits with Prophet Muhammad who brought a new law. Go ahead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do say the, uh, say God the law. Mm -hmm. By the way, you know, in, in the Hebrew, it says Torah. He will bring a new Torah. So he's not just going to bring anything. He's going to bring a new Torah because Torah mean, lo, means law in Hebrew. I'll let you finish, yeah. Five, verse five. Who said God the Lord? Mm -hmm. He that created. This is uh, it's, it's pointless. If you want to read it, you can. It's all about God talking about Himself, basically. No. There's still more. No, we're still we're still okay. not done. Yeah. Uh, you want me to go to step uh, six. By the nine. Lord have nine. Nine. All of that God is just talking about Himself. Behold, the former things mm -hmm. are come to pass. So there is something in the future is going to come now. New things do I declare before the, they spring forth? I tell the prophecy. You of that. Okay, the prophecy. Now, now, but let's let's verse eight. Can you read the ending of verse 8 or the full verse of 8? I am the Lord, mm -hmm. that is my name, mm -hmm. and my glory will I not give mm -hmm. to another, neither my praise to graven images. Ah, so that here is. the Lord is talking about idols, graven images. And we know clearly that the Jews did not worship idols, they were monotheistic, they believed in one God. So God here is talking about a nation that this man will be sent to that worship idols. And God says, I will not give my glory to those idols that they worship. Prophet Muhammad was sent to people who we were worshiping idols, or polytheists. Now verse nine, yeah? Verse nine, we read, we read, we read. It talks about something in the future. So it says something will happen in the future. Sing unto the Lord, ten. Sing unto yeah. the Lord a new song. Yeah. And prepare and his praise from the end of the earth. Mm -hmm. Ye that go down to the sea. Yeah. And all, the, all that is there in, in the isles and the inhabitants thereof. Yeah. Let the wilderness and the cities thereof lift up their voice. The villages that Kedar doth inhabit. Do you know who Kedar is? Yes, of course. Who are Kedar? Uh, well, what is today is Jordan. No, that's wrong. Uh, it's toward Kedar, Kedar are the Arabs. What? By biblical, Arabs, by biblical but not just the Jordanians. It's Syrians, referring to the Arabs specifically Lebanese. in the region. Yeah, thank you. The, that region, that region. Okay, now this is saying these people, those Arabs, will rejoice. But it doesn't only stop there. What does it say? It okay. mentions a mountain. It says, let the inhabitants of Sela sing for joy. Another geographical position from Arabia. Would you, which exists specifically okay. in Medina, where Prophet Muhammad was, was buried where he spent his ministry, okay? Let me just tell you what the Bible declares about Kedar. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not done, by the way. Let's, de let's deal with Isaiah 42, because that would be going everywhere. Let's first deal with who this prophecy is talking about, not what the Bible says about Kedar, okay? Uh, it mentions Mount Salah, which is in Medina, Saudi Arabia. So now, so far, we have someone who's going to bring a new law, who's sent to the Gentiles, who's going to go to idol worship, who's going to make the Arabs rejoice, and who's going to go to Medina, Saudi Arabia, and all of these conditions, clearly disqualifies Jesus. But it doesn't stop there. Well, it doesn't I stop disagree. there. We can, we, we can talk about why you, why you disagree. I why, I, why I disagree. I will take them word by word and I'll tell you that... Can we continue reading first? Okay, Finish it because we're not done. Uh, okay, I will read them, yeah? 
because you've been reading most of the time, you know, we we'll give you some rest. Okay, uh, this is verse 12. Let them give glory to the Lord and declare his place in the coastland, yeah? But before that, when they say let them shout on the top of mountaintops, only Muslims have a tradition where they go on mountaintops, Arafat, when they do Hajj and they praise the Lord. Only Muslims do that. Christianity doesn't have a tradition where you do that. Judaism, Judaism doesn't have a tradition where you do that. Muslims have a tradition to do that. Okay, uh, verse 13. The Lord goes forth like a mighty man, like a man of war. Who is this? The Lord. I will answer. He stirs up his fury. He cries out. He shouts aloud. He shows himself mighty against his foes. Now, God here is talking about his representative. He's not talking about himself. Just like the Bible says in Deuteronomy 33 verse 2, the Lord came from Mount Sinai, which was Moses, the representative of the Lord. So we have here the representative of the world would be like a man of war. A man of war. God is not a man. He will stir up his fury. That person, we believe, was Prophet Muhammad. He showed himself mighty against his foes, which was, which was, I know, which was the, the Arabs of Arabia who were polytheists. Now, uh, I believe this is mostly everything, but it says in, the, in verse 17, they shall turn back and utterly put to shame. So those group of graven, of graven images, look, who trust in graven images, who say to molten images, you are our gods, okay? So clearly all the, pro the criteria here fits Prophet Muhammad like a glove. Now, you can tell me if it's not Prophet Muhammad who he is. No. Go ahead. Let me just show you what the Bible declares about the the mountains of Kedah. Before, can, uh, before, can before you do that, can you tell me who is, is it talking about? Jesus Christ. Okay, so did, did the Lord Jesus Christ bring a new law? Well... Complete new law, Torah, a new Torah. Uh, yes. He, he brought a new Torah. I, I, I give, not a bring Torah, however... No, this says he, he will says, bring a new Torah. He says, I bring you, I give you a new <laughs> law to love one where, another. Where? Where? In the, in the gospel. Where does he I say new law? You. Show me, please. Where does he say he's bringing a new Torah? That's what I'm looking for because the verse here says the person will bring a new Torah. I'm looking for it, the new Torah. And I will show you where he said I he's just following. A new law to love one another. In John chapter 13, verse 34. John? Chapter 13, verse 34. Okay. John 13, 34. A new commandment. Ah. Now we saw. So love one another. Sure. It's so, new. So, him bringing a new commandment yes. is not him bringing a new law. So. That's two different things. Where did he say, I'm bringing a new law? Let us go a little bit back there. Okay. As far as I you know, can. Yeah. because I don't study Islam. Mm. Uh, but let's deal with the topic, please, because yes. we don't want to go every... to do with the topic. Sure. The, the topic so far is Jesus not bringing a new law. Yes. Can but I show you... you went for some reason to, sure. to Isaiah chapter 42. Because you said to me, Prophet Muhammad, who spoke to him, where did he get a revelation from? That was how the conversation was going. Now, before we finish, I mm. would love to ask you a few things about your prophet. Sure. Now, according to what I heard, I read a few things... Before you do that... Okay. Will you agree with me we deal with Isaiah chapter 42 first? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So, so after we deal with it, I don't mind. Answer I don't your sorry question. Because if not, I forget. And I wanted to give you something very nice about Arabs. Very beautiful. You, you're urgent to say this verse. So I will let you say it because you're urging to say it. Uh, yes, because if not... I, I know what it is, by the way. And I know which verse you're going to get it. I'll let you do it. Tell look, me, tell look. Me, tell look. Me, you know. I'll let you. Get it. Please. Tell me if you know. Get it. Get it. Wow, it's me that I sojourn in Mesek. Okay. That I dwell in the tents of Kidder. Wow, it's me. Why is this? Can you give explanations for the verse you're quoting? Or should I give explanation for what you're you quoting? Told me, you told me that you know this verse, this verse. I want you to give me your explanation of it, please. Well, obviously, these people will never accept to live in peace. By the way, my soul I agree. Don't dwell I agree. with him that hated peace. Do you know that proves my point? I am for peace, but... When I speak there for a while. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know you are proving my point? Why do so, I so God is sending someone who is going to fight with those Arabs. God held his peace for too long, which Isaiah 42 says. Okay. So God has sent his peace for so long. Prophet Muhammad fought. Prophet Muhammad fought with those Arabs. So actually that point that you're referring to supports my point. Well, 
Yeah. So thank you for bringing it yeah, up. But it disproved chapter 42. Uh, How? It says he will be peaceful. He will not change. He will not do so. No, no. It's, yes. This is, talk, this is yes, uh, yes, do, yes. do you know what it's talking, it's talking about? The yes. prophet. Yes. It's, not talking, it's not talking about God or war. Saying that he will be like a man of war. He will fight. He will put his, his enemies oh, to shame. Let's go back there a little bit. You can go. But thank you for bringing it because it supports my point. Uh, let me destroy the point. If you, you want to. It's sure. your prophet. Sure. You just said that he fought. He was he opposed a lot of resistance in uh, in Mecca. He flew from Mecca to Medina to save his. I family. never said all of that, but yeah, okay. I'll leave it. You all said right. all of that now. Let's go here a <laughs> Not bit. me, but yeah. What I said was, okay. Isaiah says he will be a man of war. He will fight. Let's he will put his enemies to shame. Let us disprove now. Sure. If you can, that's what we're now, waiting for. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the streets. Sure. Well, according to your belief, he preached about 10 years before he start fight. Where, can you show me what Prophet Muhammad was screaming? Uh, well, we assume that when you fight... Uh, that Jesus was screaming on the cross. Well, he, 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 he cried up, he cried up, he looked at heaven. Okay, so it's not about yeah. Jesus. So it's not about Jesus. Wait, well, look, don't run, don't run away. Let's deal with the verse. Away. Okay. Like just this bruise. Do you agree it's not Jesus cried up his, his voice? A bruise. Bruce Reed shall be not bricked. Which Jesus killed by and people? And the smoking flag shall... Well, you kill your... So that's not Jesus. Your prophet was such a nice guy that not even the thing, he never changed. Do you remember what I said to you when we spoke about this verse yeah. in the beginning? What you said? I don't remember. I said this is a metaphorical verse. It does not literally mean Ten that... that what you like to Can I finish? Can I finish what I'm saying? And what you don't Can I finish what I'm okay. saying? Can I finish what I'm saying? Everyone clearly speaks, cries, gets hurt in any way, shape or form, every human. Okay. Unless you can show me now a human who lived on earth, was never bruised, never lifted up his voice, was never harmed in any way. Not. Okay, therefore, you will, this is a false prophecy. If it's not a false prophecy, it means it's metaphorical. Do you agree? Well. I'm, I'm gonna let you make your judgment now. No. It's either it's a false prophecy, or it's, it's metaphorical. It's not the prophet. It's but look, Under any the, now you're just, uh, Honestly, now you're just saying your opinion, no, right? No. You're not dealing with the text. Course, you brought to me, text. you brought to me a we verse. We know that he fought, he fought against the tribes of, uh, in Medina, uh, Jewish tribes. We know that. Did I show you where it says he will fight against his enemies? Did I show you or not? Don't worry about where, where he will put his enemies to shame? Did I show you or not? Did I show you where it says he will be like a man of war? Yes, in 13. He shall prevail against his enemy. Not only that, you can read 17. Read 17. They shall be turned back, they shall be greatly ashamed. Oh, people of Kedar, which, which exactly Prophet Muhammad did. So, now, now, this is a man who will fight against his enemies. And that was not Jesus, because he never made idol worshippers who fought with them. Okay. Clearly, this was Prophet Muhammad. But you don't, oh, look, I'll be, honest, I'll be honest with you. I'll be, look, I'll be honest with you. Let me ask you a question. I'll go ahead. Yeah. Does God change sure. his mind, his thoughts? Uh, we don't know the thought of what God. The if he told us, you mean if he told us something, he told us his thought and he said he's not going to change it. Of course he's not going to change it. If he said he's not going to change okay. it. Okay. What was the original day of worship? Original day of worship? Of worship. Are you talking about Jewish people? Sabbath? Sabbath, okay. Yeah. Now, what is your holiday? Our holiday is Friday. Okay, so he changed one. Can I answer? Okay. Can I answer? First, the po first point, no, if you go to another point. Let me speak but, because you know what, where no, I'm going. No, no, you made one point, right? Do you want me to deal with it? Then you can give me the second point. That's all right? Yes. Go okay. Ahead. Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ السَّبْتُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ اخْتُلِفُوا فِيهِ Allah have made the Sabbath on those who deferred upon it. The Sabbath was only for the Jews. We're not for everyone. If you meet the Jews today, do you know what they're going to tell you? Yes. Well, they believe the Sabbath is only for them. Uh, the Jews will tell me the Sabbath is only for us. Step by step. Thank you. That's my, that's my point. So we're saying that that was the commandment for the Jews. Not for the whole entire world. When God sent another prophet to bring a new law, a new Torah, that God speaks about, he brought a new law and he has, you have a new day. But you just said that God do not change his thoughts. No. For you remember the Lord, I change not, therefore his sons of Jacob are not concerned. God doesn't change, not, not, his, not his words. Now you're mixing two things. You see, God does not change, his nature doesn't change. Well, but can you, can you neither limit? changes his sure. commandments. You're not allowing me to finish, right? Okay. Unless you show me where God says I don't change my commandments. Which is impossible, because because you have you have change of commandments in your your religion, 
change of well, well, step by step. Yeah, I, I where, where you will be arguing against yourself? No, no, so no. look, step by step, the let me finish. Can you let me finish? On Sunday, Can you let me finish? Good thing, no, I'm not talking about that only. I'm talking okay. about you said God brought a new commandment that if love one another. Did he change his mind? Look, things don't work this way. There is something which we call progressive revelation. Okay. There was a commandment of the Jewish, Jewish people. God gave a commandment for those Jewish people. Not for the whole entire world. That's why Jesus said I have been sent to the Israelites. You're trying to apply the roles of the Israelites in the Old Testament to the whole entire world. But no one says that. Even the Jewish people will tell you our laws is not for everyone. It's for us. So we agree with that. No. That was the burdens. Can I ask You're not listening to me though. His, <laughs> okay. His message, this okay. partnership between Allah and Can I ask you a question message. about you asking a question? What will you get from you if you asking that question? Honestly. As you want to know about Christianity, I want to know about Islam. Now, but first question is, who can is I, can the I say eyewitness of your prophet sure. in the cave of Hiram? Uh, Humans, not... Can I answer? Yes. Okay. Uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab, which is a companion prophet Muhammad narrated, where he and other companions were sitting down, and Angel Gabriel came and gave Prophet Muhammad commandments. They in a hadith, the, they, they, the say, they say him eye by eye. They said they came a man, he came in a man form, Angel Gabriel. They said a man who has no traveling traces. And in the deserts of Arabia, if you travel, my friend, you will be all dust everywhere. Okay. They said there came a man with a white... Can you give me the reference of this? Can I finish it first? Then I give you the reference of it? Okay. A man with white cloth, black, dark hair, no traces of travel, and he came and he gave us the commandments of, of Islam. The five pillars, the six articles of faith, and what we refer to as Ihsan. This is a very famous tradition. Now let me give it to you. Can I give it to you? Give me the... Sure. Now, oh. now you want to learn? I'm going to give you references. Okay, sure. Who saw Prophet Muhammad? Let me give you. Which is something that often people don't mention for some reason. Okay. Uh, come. So will you accept now that there is eyewitnesses when I show you? Because obviously I'm going to show you. Show me. Yeah, I will. Okay. Give but hopefully, source. hopefully we get so somewhere. Give me the source. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting the source for you. In, do you, do you? you seek. No, before I seek, let's for, let me first give you, give you the. Before you make a point where, where I cannot answer the point, which is very, will be very, very not good to do for you, to be honest, right? So allow me first to give you the point, then you can, you can do. Obviously, there is a lot of. Obviously there is a... Mm. Sorry, I'm letting you wait for a while. Oh, in between, you see? Yeah, 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 I found it, I found it here. Yeah, give me, no, 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 don't tell me in between. I, I have it here. Okay. We don't want in-betweens for now. We want to deal with our point first. Okay, uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, okay. Book of Iman, uh, Hadith number 43. Book two, Hadith number 42. Uh, it's Sunnah.com. Sorry? Well, what's the website? It's Sunnah. Sunnah.com, yeah, yeah. Is here, you want to you wanna see from Sunnah.com? I have it here. You can read the English if you want. So, chapter. The asking of Angel Jibril uh, from Prophet so Souls about Iman. Ihsan and Islam. Islam. Well, what, why is this the bracelet between? One day, while I was, Abu Huraira is narrating. Yes. Umar ibn Khattab narrated as well. So we have more people now. A lot of people are sitting down was sitting in the company of some people, the angel Gabriel come and asked, what is faith? Now, you asked me for people who saw Prophet Muhammad, but it doesn't stop there. His wife Aisha saw multiple people show. Okay. Okay, now, there is people who saw Prophet Muhammad get a revelation. Well, now, will you accept him as a prophet? No. I know. So why are you asking uh, about it? That's why see, my question okay. was to you. What's the point? It's, you accept, you agree with that everything except God is created and only him is a creation. Only him is the creator, you mean? Yeah, and everything else is created. Uh, you mean created from nothing? 
Well, because this is a creation. Every single thing that exists except God is created. Yeah. Obviously, He's the only yeah, creator. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay. Oh, yeah, these gods are telling you to face a created thing and worship. Can you show me where? Yes. But, but before you get very hyped up on it, okay. I will ask you a question afterwards because you asked two now, yeah? Yeah. Go ahead. No, I want you first to ask. I will allow you to finish. I don't mind. And you're a very, you're a fair, go. I'll tell you this, you're a fair gentleman. So I'll be fair with you as well. Go ahead. And from wherever you go, mm. and again, present for prayer, mm. turn your verse toward Majid al Haram, which, by the way, means Haram. The unclean Majid. Okay? You're going to tell me about Arabic? Seriously, you, you're going to tell me about Arabic now? What Haram means? You, Seriously, bro. Maybe turn your verse toward it. Do you know what Haram means? It means holy. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Now, is Mecca a created thing? Hmm? Mecca, the city of Mecca, is created or, or is creation? It's created, of course. Why do you face a city to worship? Because when we pray, we have unity in our prayer of worship. If I'm praying here, Still you face a do you ask me a question? Yes. You want me to, to yes. answer it? Thank you very much. Okay. That place of worship that we worship, Allah told us that this is His house on earth, His representation on earth. Allah said that He made, uh, when He created Adam, He ordered him to, be, to build the first house. That first house, we believe, is the Kaaba in Mecca. We believe Abraham have built the commandment, have built the pillars of Kaaba on the foundations of, of, uh, of Adam. And the Kaaba we have today, we believe, is a representation of God's house on earth. But we don't mean God's house that God lives in it. It means that God created it, God owns it. Now, Allah commanded us to you have unity in our worship by, step by step. To have unity in our worship by directing ourselves there. We don't worship the Kaaba. We don't say... Yet you face it. You are Yet you face it. If I face... When you pray, when you pray, if you pray right now and you face this way, are you facing the tree? Do you worship the tree? Well, this is a very absurd remember, argument, bro. Let's bring it. Okay, go ahead. You asked me at the beginning whether I'm orthodox. Or oh, he, uh, my friend asked you, but yeah, okay. yeah, 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 sure. Now, and you said you're a new, said, no. a new kind of... Uh, new Protestant yeah, belief. Yeah, yeah. Why do I... Uh, I left my forefathers' religion, or let's say faith, because I don't like the word religion. Mm. Because they have the same uh, traditions like Muslims to worship things that are made by humans. Do you know, icons, do you know in, like Islam, in Islam, what you just said is the most important commandment in Islam. Do you know that? Not to worship anything other than Allah. Well, yet you face a created thing. Now, what, this is a distinction you're making, my brother. You say facing something is worshiping it. No. Can you show me where Allah says worship the Kaaba? Well, he, he says he face. Says to face it. Oh, it's he facing same as worshiping. As long as it's a created. Thing. Do you pray? Yes. Of course. Where do you face? I don't face. I don't think about this. You. Ha oh, thank you. You don't think, no, but when you pray, you still face something. That's something that you're facing. Yeah, but I'm not mindful. I don't. I, I step, don't do it as a purpose. I step by step. Yeah. We don't do as well. But when you are commanded. Can you allow me to finish? You not. You don't allow me to you make are a point. You, you deny your, your book. You don't allow me. You don't allow me to finish. I said my book said face. Did not say worship. But you you are trying to make an excuse of that. Look, I said to you, wherever you're gonna worship God, you're gonna face something. Unless you have the intention that you're worshiping that thing, this is the blasphemy. If you can show me where Allah says worship, not face. Do not play with words. No, no, no. Do not play with words. Play. Okay. No, I will show I you where he says only worship him. Show me where he says worship. No. Worship now let me show you. Now let me show you where he says only worship him. And he never said worship anything else. Now you're claiming he said worship. You have to show me where he said worship. No, don't no. put your own words on our, on our book. I said he, so we don't worship. Unless you show me where he says worship. To face. This is what uh, yeah, face that worship. Thank you. Yeah, yes, we face the Kaaba, but we don't worship it. Well, but however, whenever you go for prayer, turn your face toward Masjid al -Aram. Mm. Can I show you a verse now? For prayer. Okay, thank you. Can I show you a verse now? Yeah. Do you, can, I want to read from your, 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 because it will be funny. And I want you to read it. Yeah, can I use it? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you thank you. Okay. Now, now, now let's, let's read. That, this would be very, very, very funny, I believe. Okay. And I want you to be, to be, to, uh, to, to pay close attention, attention to what I'm going to show you, yeah? Okay. As much as you can, yeah? Brace yourself for this, yeah? Okay. Can you read? Loud voice, the please. The foolish among the people will say... Can you repeat? The foolish the among fool? the people will say... Yeah. 
what has turned them away from their Qibla. Direction of prayer. Which the Qibla is the black spot. Oh, the foolish will say. Now continue reading. Which they used to face. Yes. F continue. Say, say yeah. to Allah belongs the East and the West. Can you repeat that? Say to Allah belong the East and the West. Thank you. Finish reading. He guides whom he wills to a straight path. What does that mean? That, that is a clear cut refutation of what you said. Allah tells us wherever you face, Allah is there. He says, to Allah belongs east. No, he also says wherever you face yourselves, yourselves, Allah is there. Now, Allah is clearly saying we're not worshipping him. Now, me answering your questions, you have to allow me to ask your questions. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, please. We on this. Uh, please. Okay. Now, I'll give you two questions in, in return of two questions. Is Jesus equal to the Father? Yes. Okay. What does equal mean? Same. Exactly the same attributes. Okay. So, is God all powerful? Indeed. Was Jesus all powerful? Indeed. Okay. Is God immortal? Doesn't die? Yes. Indeed. Did Jesus die? Yes. He died. Therefore, he's not God. He's not equal to God. Number two. A step by step, I'm making a few points. Does God know everything? Is he all knowing? Yeah, of course. Was Jesus all knowing? Uh, no. In his human form. Okay. He was not. He was not equal. To tell us he, no. No. He said he doesn't know. Okay. Which means he's not equal. Okay, let me ask another question. Um, is God independent? Mm. Was Jesus independent? No, he was dependent on food. He was dependent on his mother when he was a baby. He was dependent on, on so many things in life, on air to breathe, to walk. Okay, uh, can anyone kill God? No. Oh, was Jesus killed by men? He died on the cross. Okay, if Jesus was killed by men, therefore Jesus is not God because he doesn't have the attributes of God. Okay, is anyone greater than God? No. He's the creator. Was oh, Jesus equal to, to the Father in greatness? Yes. Jesus says the Father is greater than I in the Gospel but of John. Step by step. If you allow me to finish. I, we are one. Allow me to finish. When he says the Father is greater than I, he shows that. When he says also the Father is greater than all, which I showed you, proves that he is not equal to the Father. Now, what we have here is something very simple. Father, which is complete in attributes, perfect, essential. And we have a man. You say you don't want to worship creation and you worship creation, which is Jesus. Someone who is not perfect, who's not equal to his father and who worshipped his own father. When Jesus put his face on the floor, who did he worship? Well, that's an illustration. Who did he, he worship? Okay, let me just answer. Go ahead. He never really needed to That's to your pray. claim, not his claim. He never said this I don't need my, to pray. This is not biblical, this is my belief. Sure, so I don't have to accept it. Okay. Of course you don't. Unless it's biblical, uh, then we have uh, something to talk about. He sacrificed. It's for the human race redemption because this, that, that was the only way to... Do you agree with me that's a different topic? My question, because I answer your question when you ask me my questions, right? Okay. I give you exact answers. Now, my question is clear. Jesus was not all-knowing, was not all-powerful, was not immortal. He died yeah. and God, Father is greater than him. Yes. And that's proof that he's not God. Well, it doesn't prove anything. How? I'll tell you if why. he's less than God, why you worship him? No, he's God. And I, I just showed you God. that he is less than the yes. Father. You just uh, quote the scripture and mm. I will also do likewise. Go ahead. But deal with my points, please, yeah? Knowledge. Come unto us in mm. the book of Isaiah chapter. Jesus was not alive there. He was a But I can read it, I can read it, I can read it. I know it. Unto us a child is born. Sure. Unto us a son is given. Mm -hmm. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Okay. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, Stop there. Mighty God. Stop there. Okay. Can you show me where Jesus was called wonderful counselor? Ever? Even once? It doesn't matter. It okay. doesn't matter anything to me. Look, look. If I say the in the future... God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Can I answer? Okay. When okay. you finish, tell me. Yeah? Yes. When you finish, the tell everlasting me. everlasting father. When you finish, Would tell you me. Would you like to describe me the word everlasting place? Can I answer? Yes. Okay, sure. You made a quotation. You didn't deal with my questions. Because my question, as I said to you, and that's, that's not fair. You were being fair, but now you're not being fair. I'm trying to, step, I'm step trying by step. to answer it through the yeah, scripture. But I step, I step by step. My questions were about knowledge, were about immortality, were about independency, were about specific things when it comes to God. We're not general questions. You went to a general verse, but let me answer that general verse. It says someone will be born in the future, and how do we know that who's that person? He will be called these names. Now, I want you to show me where and Jesus... Names, step, can you allow me to finish? Yeah. Where was Jesus called any of these names? Where was Jesus called Everlasting Father, which you love? Where was he called Wonderful Counselor? Where was he called Prince of Peace? He said, I did not come for peace. Can you show me where Jesus was called any of these names? 
Actually, this verse is proof that he's not talking about him because he was never called any of these names. Can you show me where he's called? In the New Testament, he one time. He is the son of the living God. That will come. Look, sure. sure. Well, Look, listen. Do you know Adam was the son of the living God? Uh, Do you know David was the son of the living no, God? Abraham was the son of the Do you know you are the son of the living no, God? No, I'm not. Can I show you the verse? Let, let me just... Uh, I know, I know the scripture. Uh, okay, let so it says, Blessed be the peacemakers, let, let, for they shall be called the sons of God. Let, I know the bad it was sure. of the uh, Matthew sure. chapter 5, sure. 6 and 7. Sure. But you don't need look, to teach look, me the scripture. Look, I'm not no. teaching you anything. I'm telling let you... Me just to tell you something because mm. you don't like, allow me to speak. Let me just show, tell you that... But it was my turn, that's why. It was my turn, isn't it? But look, I'm, Adam, da I'm, I'm done. The difference between Adam yeah. and Jesus. No, that was not my question. No, no, no. Let me... Because you just... Why are you going there? Now we're going everywhere. You just mentioned Adam. Look, I... Be, Why you mentioned Adam? I'll be, yes. be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Yes. Look, I... When I ask questions... When someone asks me questions, I deal directly with the questions. I don't play. Yes. I don't play. You, step by step. You said you just mentioned Adam. Uh, step by step. Can I tell you why? Why? Okay. You said, I answered your question. I said, how do we know him? According to the verse, he has to be called these names. That's my main point. Let's deal with that. He was not called any of these names. Therefore, it cannot be Jesus because he was never named any of this. You said to me, oh, he was the living son of God. I was talking about the son of God. I said, there's a lot of sons of God. Therefore, I mentioned Adam. Now, let's not deal to the side point and let's deal with the main point. Was Jesus referred to as any of these? If he was, show me one verse in the New Testament where he is. Well, one verse. Uh, Everlasting Father, Great Counselor, in, uh, Prince of Peace. In the New Testament, he called himself the Everlasting Father. Show me. In the book of Revelation. Should be a big contradiction. Oh, no, that, that would not be a big Because he's not the Father. But let, find it. let's find it. Where it says uh, everlasting. But, but wait, one second, one second. Before you show me this, this doesn't deal with my point. Do you know why? I said where he will be called. Are you listening to me? Yes. No, no listen. No, no, before you read. Before you read. Why? Why you can I tell you, you can I tell you why? Here. Because I know which verse you're going to. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I answer? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. If I call myself the everlasting father, that's not fulfilling the prophecy. You're not looking, you're not listening to me, yes. unfortunately. Can you, let me tell me when you're ready and I, and I will explain my point. Revelation. Okay. Can I, can I make the point before you read? Yeah, go. Before you read, okay. Can you focus with me? Yeah. With me? Okay, thank you. If I say right now, I'm the everlasting father, I'm the prince of peace, that doesn't mean the prophecy fulfilled me. Yes, but we believe that this book you don't. A step by step, you're not getting the point I'm making. I'm saying the prophecy says he will be called. He's not going to call himself. This is two different things. You're showing me Jesus calling himself. I want to see where he's called. The verse in 9, 6 says he shall be called by other people meaning. Prince of peace, wonderful counselor, everlasting yes. father. Can I ask so, you? Can you uh, others doesn't call himself mm. with those titles. It doesn't mean that he is not. So we don't we don't know the prophecies about him then. So let's let's get, come back to my point. In Revelation chapter one, I am Alpha and Omega. Where is the beginning? Where is the Father? The where where is I'm the everlasting Father? Well, the one that made all things that and that do you know first first things, and he's the, the Creator. First, and this is Jesus. Do you know the difference between first and last and between everlasting? Do you know the difference between eternal. Well, a step, a step, but I know the difference between. Uh, well, I haven't even said even what I'm gonna say. Look, be, be sincere and be honest with me now. Look, I'm honest. Okay, I'm can we come back to my point? Person. Yes, go. Back. All of this is irrelevant. My point was what is, what is relevant? The relevant is what I said in the beginning. Jesus is not equal in knowledge, unless you show me he's equal in knowledge. He's not equal, he's not immortal. God is immortal. And Jesus was killed by his own creation, according to your belief. He was independent. I want you to show me where he's equal there. That, is that if I say you are greater than me, are we equal? Well, you just said that he was killed that by his own. Now leave this point. If no, I say, why, why, why do you want me to leave? Because yeah, you don't deal with I my agree. point. Because you don't deal he with my point. He was killed on the cross. He was crucified. No. Do you agree he was, he was he was he didn't know as the Father knows? Do you agree he didn't know the hour like the Father knows the hour? Uh, you speak about the book of Matthew chapter 24. Now leave it. No, 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 no. Mark 13, 32. Uh, but even, even it's both in Mark and Matthew. But let's, let's deal with the, with the issue. Do you accept that Jesus did not know the hour and the Father knew the hour? Well... Look, I, now we're going to... We're not being honest. 
Okay. Let me, let me think about okay, it. Okay, go ahead. No problem. Now, think about it. Hmm. Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ. I gave you and other Muslims today that, that verse, but you never accept anything you listen. About knowledge? About anything. Or you gonna? About anything you. Uh, Would you, you say that about me? About almost. So I was not listening to you when we talked. Did I avoid? Even though you listen, did you I avoid your question? Keep them in mind. Okay, now now I you're saying something you else. Now you're judging me. I just told you many times okay. from the book of Philippians chapter mm. two that. Being, That's not Jesus. Who is this then? This is Paul. You don't know that? That he was talking about Jesus. So I'm saying where Jesus talking about himself. Where did he say he's equal? Look, you're not. Do you remember my question? Is Jesus, is a simple yes or no question, is Jesus equal in knowledge with the Father? Uh, in, in his actual state, yes, he is, right now. So why did he lie by saying he doesn't know? Well, he was not yet glorified. So you agree he's lied? You agree he lied? No, he doesn't lie. So he didn't know? He was not yet glorified. He was in flesh. When he was on earth, was he, was he God? Yes. Okay, so as God, he didn't know. As God, he didn't know. Well, I gave you, I give you for the five, fifth time this scripture. Okay, you're not going to answer says, my question. Okay. I think, I think this, God, I think, this is God, I think, like this is Paul. I think, I think we're not going to, we're not going to have a nice conversation if you don't answer my questions. I'll be honest with you. Just completely, you look, completely. Just you asked me two questions about Islam. Why you don't accept Paul? I'll tell you why I don't accept I don't Paul. Accept can I tell you why? Wait, me, can I tell you why I don't accept I, Paul? Can I tell you why? Yeah. Because I can say whatever I want about you. Unless you say this, I cannot know it for sure. Okay. Paul had a problem with, with Peter and had a problem with James. He was going around lying, telling people they don't have to follow the oh, law. He got a problem with, only with it's, Peter, not with James. Do you know the head of the... Can I show I you... I give you the, the scriptures if you can, want. Can I give you the scripture about James? The problems with James? Yeah. His problem was with, Paul, with Peter. Do you, know, in the do you know the head of the apostolic, apostolic church was both James and Peter? And do you know the verse says all the elders were present when the problem happened? Now, let's not, let's, step by step, let me finish. You think you know the, the Bible better than I do? Look, you don't. I don't, you, don't you think you're being arrogant in saying no, something like this? No, because you... I'm not claiming I know the, about the Bible more than you. Did I ever claim this? Galatians chapter 2. I'm not talking about this. Do you see why? You're talking about something else. This is the only problem No. Peter, uh, Paul got with you. If I showed you another problem, that means you don't know, that means I know more than you. Okay. And Can then, I show you another problem? Yeah, show me another problem. You agree you don't know? Show me another problem. Look, I'm not trying to show that you list. Can, can I speak? Sure, sure. Let's have. We were having a nice conversation, right? Let's, let's continue having a nice conversation. I'm not trying to show that I know more than you. Okay? So please focus with me. Before you look, you look. You're thinking on the next question. The problem. You're not. You're not focusing with me. No, I just show you the problem that was uh, between Paul and Peter. Sure. Can we come back? Can we come back to what I'm saying? Yeah. Go. I'm not referring to Galatians. I'm referring to Acts. I'm referring to a completely different issue. Paul was teaching the Jewish people. You don't have to follow the law. James and Peter, which is the head of the apostolic church at the time, had an issue with him. They told him, are you going around telling the people they don't need the law anymore? Go, shave your head, sacrifice, show the people. I will show you now. In the book of Acts. Can you allow me to finish my point, yes. please? Please. I can show you right now everything I'm saying in the Bible. I'm not making a claim. But before all of this, let's deal with my point. Let's not run away. Let's no, not. I'm not running away, okay. but you don't you to accept. You told me why I don't accept Paul. I was giving you my reasons, step by step. Well, can I tell you why I don't accept your prophet? Please. I don't want to offend you. No, you're not going to do it. Are you sure you would I consider him the most biggest sinner ever walked over this planet. Okay, sure. A man that got, got married with a six years old girl mm -hmm. will never mm -hmm. be my prophet. Can I answer that? Yes. Can I answer that? Yes. Okay. Before answering that, I want to make a, a very important principle. Him making sins disqualifies, disqualifies him as a prophet. Oh, it disqualifies him as the biggest prophet that ever existed. Oh, do you know what the Quran says? No, I don't. All the prophets are, are equal and we believe in all of them equally. So according to the... Our belief in prophets, belief-wise, we believe in all the prophets equally. Their status is what God puts their status how to be. How that sounds, please? Can I answer? Yes, but... Sure. Can I answer my point first? Yeah. Because you need to understand my point clearly. Belief, we believe in all of them equally. Status is what God determines it to be. Now, coming back to the Shahada, the one who dedicated the Shahada in Islam, we say, we say, by the way, that you, uh, some scholars say you have to say Ashadu an la ilaha illallah if you're Christian. Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Ashadu anna Isa Rasulullah. Jesus. 
Oh, so you mentioned even Jesus. Do you know why? Do you know why? We can mention Moses, Abraham, Solomon. Do you know why? But if I don't, step by step, let me answer. If we don't believe in any of the prophets of God, we're not Muslims. Any. Okay, that's why I said in belief, they're equal. So I can clearly say that statement. I can say, Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna, I, I, I believe in all the prophets of Allah. I can say that. But coming back to my point, please. Coming yeah, back yeah. to my point. Okay. Sins do not disqualify you as a prophet. Do you agree? Or you want me to go to the Old Testament? No, no, no. Okay, go ahead. If you will allow because me you said why you don't believe is he's a sinner. If, that was your you, claim. If you allow me to develop my point, Great. we're going to have a very nice conversation. Are you saying I don't allow you to speak? No. I allow you to speak. Uh, prophets of God in the Old Testament. You just mentioned the Old Testament. No, I mentioned, my question was simple. Does sins disqualify you from being a prophet? I said that maybe four, five times. Please, clear answer, yes or no answer? Okay. Please. Yeah. We have examples in the Bible, in the Old Testament, because of one mistake, Moses was forbid to step into the promised land. Am I right or wrong? I don't agree with this, no. Is that? This is, look, you, you're not getting the point here, right? You're okay. talking about your faith. I'm asking a question now. What, you ask me. Moses done, done a the sin. Done a sin. Your point was Moses did a, did a sin. It stopped him from going to the promised land. Ask me again the question, please. Your question was, Moses made a sin. It stopped him from going to the promised land, right? God, God told him because of this mistake, sure, he sure. would not So, so did Moses commit a sin? Yes. He was he a prophet? Mistake, uh, was he a prophet? Yes, prophet, yes. So prophets can make mistakes. But the consequence of his sin... Uh, sure. Didn't allow him to step in. No problem. No problem. This is one. Consequences are something. Now, now, look. You said to me, okay. look. Coming Second. back to, my, Achi, let me speak, right? Okay. You said to me, I'm, I'm calling you Achi now. Look. Coming back to my point, right? <laughs> she means brother, yeah. Coming back to my point. Look. My question was simple. You said I don't believe in Prophet Muhammad because of sins. I said to you, prophets committed sins in the Old Testament. Sins does not disqualify you from being a prophet. Number one. Now, number two. Do you want me to deal with the point of Aisha? Do you want me to answer your question? Well, that's one point. There are many problems with this prophet. Then okay, you're not being, you're go, not, go look, this. if I deal with this, with this, no, step by step. If I deal with this point, now you have asked me around three questions and I dealt with them directly. I asked you one question about the equality between Jesus and the Father, you didn't answer it. Is that fair? Well, I try to give you the answers, but obviously you don't accept Lim, you haven't given me any direct answers. Well, I went to the scriptures. No. I'm a Christian. No, going to the scriptures. Okay. If, if, if I'm talking about equality of Jesus, you go and show me where Jesus uh, talked to his sister, that's a completely different topic, even if you're going to the scriptures. You need to go to where the scripture talks about the topic I asked you, like I did with you when you asked me about the Qibla. Right? Well, I tried, Look. but you, don't, you didn't allow me. If this is Paul, we don't believe him. Can you show me where Paul talks about Jesus being equal in knowledge with the Father. And if Paul said that, he's lying about Jesus because he said he's not. You see, you just not, even if you... No, I'm saying, did say Jesus say he doesn't know? Did Jesus, did Jesus say so he doesn't know? Simply tells me that even if I go show me, to show me, show me, show me, show me, show me. Go ahead. Show me where, where Paul says he's equal in knowledge with, 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 with uh, Jesus is equal with, in knowledge with the Father. Show me. I'll let you do it. Yeah, finally taking some weight, yeah? Here's a comparison in Hebrew chapter 3. Again, uh, the author of this book, which I believe is Paul. Is it about knowledge? Uh, Do you see how you're not dealing with my point? About I said to you, I said to you, you use... Attribute. No. I, you see. It's about knowledge. Do you know why I'm asking about knowledge? Because Jesus stated let, himself, let he doesn't why, know. Let, let me tell you why you ask. Go ahead. You are trained hmm. to grab on very, very... Small, very precise. Can I leave knowledge aside? 
Can I ask you where are the equal in immortality, not knowledge? If you don't want to deal with knowledge, go to immortality. If oh, you're not going to listen to me clearly. <laughs> okay. No, because you don't accept even. You How can I accept when you don't I'll provide you anything? I'll provide anything. How can I'll I accept? I'll give you my uh, my phone now. I'll go home because I have not the Bible here. I live in Leicester. Okay. I didn't read the Bible for a very long time. It's fine. I will go to the. That's fair. I accept this. Let me this. That's fair. But I know from now, mm. even though I give you thousands of references, you will never accept them. Why? Because I would. Muslim. I would. I would accept the point. You Look. will start accusing Paul. Now you're judging me, right? If you give me, if you give me, you're Muslim. I know. No, no, no. If you're giving me an answer from the Bible where it shows they are equal in knowledge, then I will have another question. Do you know what question will that be? How can Jesus say he doesn't know? The father knows, and then another verse says they're equal in knowledge. I will ask you, isn't that a contradiction? That will be my question to you, even if you... Well, a step by step, if you allow me to finish, right? Yeah. But if you answer my contradiction logically, I will accept the point. That they're equal in knowledge according to the Bible. Why would I disagree if the Bible says it? But you're judging me. I'm asking you a step by step. I'm assuming I don't judge. No. Okay, don't, don't assume I'm telling you it's a wrong assumption. Judging, I'm telling you... What I did sure. your prophet. That's sure. a judgment. Okay. And that's the wrong thing. That's why I'm telling you. Now, coming back to the answer now. I, I will never you said to me you're Romanian, yeah? You said to me you're Romanian. Yes, okay, okay. Now, let me ask you this question. What is the age where you should marry a girl? According to the Bible. Well, uh, according to the law. Yeah, please. Not to the Bible. In that, Romania. I don't know here in England. Sure. If you go to sleep with a girl under 60, you will face... 16? Yeah. Okay. Why is that better than a law in the country that says 18? Why should we pick 16 over 18? And why is that different than Philippines, which says 11? Philippines, 11 or 13? And Japan, which says 12? Now, my question to you is this. These ages, on what basis are you picking? Well, I, I believe in the, the countries you mentioned, laws, they, they choose... Do you know why they make these laws? I don't know. Because the girls there grow up physically and psychologically in a different way where the girls do in your country. That's number one. Yeah. Number two is a part of their culture. Something that they're, they're used to. It's not something taboo. But what people do are they're judging their own culture on a culture that existed in a desert in Arabia 1,400 years ago. Do you know Aisha? was already engaged. You know what engaged, being engaged is? Was already engaged before Prophet Muhammad uh, 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 does the, the, the contract with her. Prophet Muhammad did not have marriage with her intercourse until she was nine. She was not six. I know. Okay. Before he makes a contract with her, do you know she was engaged already by someone else? No, I don't. Do you know one of his other wives, which was called Safiya, married at, at the age of 10? Not him, someone else. No, I didn't know. That was how the culture was working at the time. Now, unless, unless we can show Prophet Muhammad harmed Aisha in any way, shape or form, we are in no position to judge what a culture was doing 1,400 years ago. Now, it doesn't stop there. Do you know 200 or two, 300 years ago, in the UK and in America, what was the legal age of marriage? I don't know. Can you guess? Well, I believe 12. Seven years old. Oh. You know, according to who? William Blackstone. Do you know why they used to marry young? There was wars. If, who goes fights and wars? Men. If you do not multiply, if you do not multiply quickly, you will not survive. That's number one. Number two, they had low life expectancy, right? So they used to die early. They didn't have the same advancement in medicine. So they used to die in an earlier age. Also, the girls used to get mature very quickly. Do you know why? Of the educational system that we have. You have elementary school today, if you listen to me, sorry. Yeah, I'm listening. Elementary school, secondary school, yeah. high school. So you condition the, the little children to only deal with little children. So they don't, they don't develop quickly. Yeah, I, I'm listening. I know you're not listening. I'm listening. <laughs> you know, men cannot focus with two things at the time. I'm a man, so, so you focus with me or... Okay, what did I say? You just said that the, the girls in our society, in our time, mm -hmm deal with different things like school, therefore they don't think about marriage. No, I said the girls, I didn't say that. You see, that's what I'm saying, you're not focusing exactly with me. I said those girls are conditioned with school to deal with people of their own age. So they do not get mature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But at that time, they, they didn't have this. They used to, the girl reaches the age of puberty, straight away the girls is ready for marriage. That's how it was. But my question to you is this. Who defines an adult? Do you know what, what, what definition of an adult? 
Yes. What is the definition of an adult? Well, a man uh, that reaches puberty, or wo a woman that reaches puberty. Okay. Do you know that Aisha reached puberty? Before Prophet Muhammad had intercourse with her. Do you know according to a book called Human Development, on average girls on the age of 10 years old reach the age of puberty? On average. In hot weather, the physical nature of the girl grows much quicker than the cold nature. Do you know that? No, I don't. There is experiment on fish. They have applied heat on the fish, and the fish that has heat have grown much quicker than the fish that didn't have the same amount of heat. Heat affects your, your genes and how you grow. So when we look back at 1,400 years ago, that was completely different elements. Girls used to, to grow maturely very easily. It was the culture of the time. They were also uh, psychologically very mature. Prophet Muhammad waited three years. Why would he wait three years? If he wanted to do something with a kid, why would he wait three years? Well, None of the people at the time of Prophet Muhammad have accused him of doing something wrong. Let's say I will, I will have a sexual intercourse with this nine years old girl. Today? Today? What, how the society Islam will, says it's wrong. Me. Islam says it's wrong. No, no, no. Let, let us even forget how the society... Islam says it's wrong. How does this society will call me? This society, use the word. This society has an age restriction. Therefore, they will look at you like you're someone different. But that's the problem. Who says this society is right? And the society 1,400 years ago was wrong. That was my question to you. Who says that? Well, my age where does the Bible my, say my the age of the age of marriage? Where does the Bible say? Simply that if I will. Now you're applying your country's laws, no, not no, God's no, laws. No, not even my my own intellect okay. tells me that it's very very today, bad. Today, today I agree. Have you been? Have you ever been to the people who live in mountains? Well, of course, I'm from Romania. We have a lot of mountains. Okay. The people who only strictly live in mountains, they only eat from, yes, from the land. Yes. How are these people growing? How, the, how is their physical nature? There is no, at least in my country, there is uh, no... Then your country is... is it, how, how, why is the weather in your country? It's... Uh, it's Europe. Tempera it's Europe. Temperate continental. Uh, it's, it's Europe. No. I'm talking about countries which are hot. Have you ever been? No, I don't. Okay. If you go there, you will see how the girls look. The girl is, eight, the girl is 18 years old and she looks like 21. They have different psychological, different societal, different environmental elements. You cannot apply your own standards or anyone else. Unless you show me God, where did God put a standard for age in the Bible, for marriage? Well, I don't think that it's a standard to marry a woman. Thank you. But you, I'm not sure. okay, so I'm saying if I stand a society, no one criticized Prophet Muhammad for, for, for his marriage. Do you know that? He called him a magician, a liar. He called him everything. No one criticized him for marrying Aisha. Do you know why? Do you know why? That was the norm. Do you know the first wife of Prophet Muhammad? Yes. How old, how old was she? I think 40. 40. How old was he? 28. 24. Or 20, 25, sorry. So, if someone wants to marry children, why would he marry someone 15 year, years old, older than him? Now, do you know all of the wives of Prophet Muhammad were widows, divorcees? Do you know a widow and a divorcee? A woman who was married or got divorced or her husband died, she's a widow. All of the other wives of Prophet Muhammad were like this. The Sorry, ages... Why he needed so many wives? That's a good question. To bring the people close. He married girls. For example, Safiya that I mentioned to you about, she was the son of the leader, leader of the Jewish tribe in Mecca. So he's bringing the people close. That's what, that was their tradition at the time. You understand? Yeah. The Arabs and the tribes, if I marry your daughter, that's how we... You know, kings used to do the same. A king married the daughter of another queen. That's yeah, how you bring the countries wrong. close. That, that not necessarily. Not necessarily. If the girl is okay with it, it's not wrong. Why is it wrong? Why is it wrong if the girl is okay with it? Because I, I have very big no. uh, capacities to memorize. I memorize some of your scripture. Before you come to my scripture, before you come to it, because you're not being sincere with me right now. Why? I answer three of your questions. I'm a very sincere person. You know this. I, I answer a sincere person will not say he's a sincere person. Okay. But coming back to what I'm saying, yeah? I told you I will answer your question. Now you want to jump to another question. Right? So to me, to you, it doesn't matter how many, how many answers I will give you. It will not change your mind. Of course. Okay. That's a so, fact. so if you are saying this, how are we having a conversation? No, well, you see. No point. Let me, if let you're me. not an open mind, listen, I'm, I'm willing to change my mind with evidence. Well. You're not listen, willing to do the same. A Hindu guy told me once in, in the city of Leicester. Uh, a Hindu evangelist, let's call him evangelist, was in the streets to... Very little they do this, but yeah. To handle leaflets. Sure, sure, sure. Not many they do this. So... Are you talking about the Hare Krishna? Yes. Ah, specifically the Hare Krishna, I, yeah. When I refused to, hmm. to take what he was about to handle yeah, yeah, me, yeah, yeah. I said, no, I'm a Christian. 
guess what? Oh, you Christian, you are open-minded. And then what? You will take advantage of my then of my open-mindedness. No, he's to, generalizing. To force me, to force me into your belief. Are you are you telling me all Christians are open-minded? Well, no. Of that, course, I, so he's, he's wrong. Of what I've seen so, he, so he is wrong. When he says when he says all Christians are open, you're Christian, therefore you're open-minded. That's a wrong thing to say. Look, well, Muslims, do you agree there is necessarily means sure. accepting everything? Did I say you accept everything? But you said to me, no, no matter what I show you, you will not accept. That means... Regarding Islam, yes. Sure. So that yeah. is, that is what, what I'm talking about, open-mindedness or not. Not whether you are willing to accept something or not. You're saying I'm not going to accept when, anything. When it comes to Islam... Step by step, step by step. Yeah. Let me put a list. Yeah. Starting from Judaism, okay. uh, Buddhism, Christianity, mm. Hinduism, Sikhism. Dhamma, Sikhism, Sikhism. Okay. Uh, I will, I will like for, Buddhism. The last, for the last Islam. Sure. And that will be the one I would never accept. It's your choice. But as long, look, as long as you said to me uh, that whatever I show you, you're not going to accept, to me, that is enough. Do you know why? The Quran says that. And no matter which sign you show them, if you show them every sign, you will not believe in it. If you show them the truth, the way of truth, they will not accept it. If you show them the way of misguidance and falsehood, they will adopt it. Now, you can say you're not doing that. That's up to you. Can you do something for me? If, if I can, if it... If, if you want, if, obviously if you want, yeah. Can you read the Quran? Not, not selected verses, but open the book from the beginning, which we'll talk about Adam, by the way, in chapter 2. It will be interesting for you because the story is really interesting for you. It will be different. Can you read the Quran? Well, uh, I would be very honest with you. Uh, even to have under my roof the Quran would be an offense. Okay. So, you said to me your name is Lee Livio. Yeah. Okay. So, pleasure talking to you, to you Livio. I opened the Quran it was, sometime in It was... Sorry? I opened the Quran... You shouldn't shake hand, isn't it? Because uh, of the Corona. Don't worry. Yeah, it doesn't I'm matter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. I read many, 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 many books. I'm 41. Mm. Uh, and I had a Quran and I... You know, Livio, I have one condition to talk to someone. Do you know what it is? He is sincere and he is willing to accept if I show him evidence. If someone like yourself, which is you're not the first one, says to me, whatever you show me, I'm not going to accept. This is what I set my mind to. To me, to me, a step Can I ask you about living. one thing about myself? Yeah, go ahead. Do you think that I would ever invent stories as far as, as, far as, as you know me? About today? what? About what? Generally. So far, what I know you, you might do something for the sake of Christianity, right? But in general, you're a very nice person. You're a person who listens, and you're a person who is, I would say, majority fair. That's my, my judgment of this discussion. If you, if you want my opinion, obviously. That's just my opinion, right? Do yeah. you think that mm. I would ever, ever in my life invent stories? It depends what story it is, isn't it? Regarding religions. I don't know. I cannot judge from this simple conversation on that. On now, that. On that. Last year, I cannot give an answer for that. Last year, mm. I don't really remember the time. Oh, you mean a story in your life? Yes. Okay, yeah. You're going to tell me your personal experience? Personal experience. Do you know I have one as well? But doesn't mean Islam is true to you, is it? No, no, let me... I, no, tell me you. Please. Look, look, no, I, no, I don't want to tell you my... Tell you my I'll tell you what, can I tell you why I don't want to tell you? Why? I believe it's a personal. Do you know what personal means? Something which is yours. It's a personal experience between me and God. So it's step not by, a very intimate thing. A step, a step by step, yeah. It's a personal experience between me and God. And the reason I don't want to tell you is this. It becomes a competition. We have a Hindu here telling me his personal experience. We have a Buddhist there telling me his personal experience. All of them, they do. That doesn't mean the religion is true. What is your name? Muhammad. Muhammad. Muhammad, like the Muhammad. prophet. Like the prophet, now, yeah. Let me go very slowly through a few things. It will take me a few minutes. You're gonna do what, sorry? Let me go through a few things. It will take me three minutes, no more than Depending that. Depending on what the few now, things. Because I, I think... Me, I, anyway, I need to go uh, to the toilet. I now. need to go pray as well. That's why I'm asking you. On what, on what are these few points? In May or something like this, you want to tell me a story, yeah? Even I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to stop dream. you. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to stop you. I'll, I'll tell you why. Because to me, I heard so many stories, and and I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. You remember my initial question? Sorry, what was your initial question? Do you think that I will ever, ever in my life invent stories? Do you remember my answer? You, you said you don't know because. So how would I answer if I don't know? You know, pleasure talking to you. You know. My pleasure. Thank you. No, 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 that's me. That's me. Did I offend you in any way? No, no, no. Thank you for your time. You have very good character. I'll tell you this. Thank you. See you.